the long line fishery, a main line with baited hooks that trails the commercial fishing vessel at variable depths targeting highly migratory species. That's what we're talking about today. The true concern for the American populace is where are we getting our seafood from? The American consumer is going to have to get used to eating a tilapia taco because that's about all that's going to be available to them. They're going to be eating gas fish from another country. It's going to look great because they've put gas in there and sealed it up in a package and they're going to trick you. And it's going to be sold as local seafood. We all know, I'm not blaming anybody, but we all know that seafood is sold as locally caught when it came off an airplane from overseas. Again, I can go along with any quota that's necessary. You know, we understand it's got to be sustainable. But what's happening to us, our industry is not sustainable if we've got to incur what the agency is pushing down our throats. The main gripe the commercial fishermen have with Amendment 15 is the cameras and having to pay for them. No fishery state the proposal of Amendment 15, pelagic longline electronic modern cost allocation. Consider shifting pelagic longline EM sampling costs from the agency to the industry. But, but think about this for a second. The pelagic longline industry is food producer to this nation. We're given access to this resource of polymigratory species, swordfish, uh, big eye tuna, uh, bluefin tuna, uh, yellowfin tuna, and uh, mahi. Because if the federal government's gonna force something on us and then make us pay for it, it's so unjust. Big brother with the cameras. I mean, we can't even take a leak without being, being seen. And the other thing is, is the camera equipment's now so old, it's starting to break down. It's got salt damage, the connections are bad, the cameras get scratched up, the lenses go bad, and now they want us to pick up the bill to repair all this old, outdated equipment or purchase new. And to purchase new, they're talking $7,500 for the equipment and $75 an hour labor to install it. Now you're talking about a huge burden on a small boat. I don't think that's the American way. We're small business. We're proud small businessmen. And what this agency is trying to do is, is it's criminal. You're also being filmed 24 seven as if you were in prison or you were a shoplifter, correct? Treated like criminals. The come about of the cameras was to account for our dead discards of bluefin tunas. Having too many bluefins and only allowed to keep so many and discarding some, they said we need to implement a, a better way to give individuals bluefin quota and to implement it so they can reduce their bluefin tuna interactions. <coughs> Bless you. Sorry about that. that was in 2015. But the agency doesn't want to look, they don't want to address what we're doing now. They want to look in the past and crucify us for what may have been. But now we've changed the way we fish. Back on all the information they have, pre-cameras that they decided to install cameras, we were float lining which is, we call it float lining now, but it was subsurface, but we were fishing mostly within 120 to 240 feet of the surface with our hooks. Our hooks were right close to the surface. Well, we've since learned a better way to fish, much less bycatch, that's the number one thing. It's more economical, we put out less line and we put out less hooks. Doing that right there has cut the bycatch way down. We used to set 40 miles of line and 1,200 hooks. Today I'm setting 16 miles a line and 500 hooks. But they're not using that science yet for this particular amendment 15. They're using data from our log books from 1997, 2019. And when we look at this amendment and the different aspects of it, we consider it to be outdated information. How much could you be looking at having to come off the top of your profit? Well, they had estimations at a meeting we recently went to, and the estimations are far below. They're, they're trying to sugarcoat it. And they had an estimation of $280 to just to view the footage on the camera per set. 
That's $280 per set. Sometimes the mate doesn't make that much on a set. Almost $1,500, correct me if I'm wrong, that's like having another crewman. Yes. Yes, right. the crew member lucky to make $1,500 on trip. He's done well, but yeah. If your system fails, I'm guessing uh, $8,000 to $12,000 to fix your system. At the same time, if your vessel monitoring system goes out, you could be, when the vessel monitoring system was implemented, it was at a cost of $3,100. And in 2022, when I had to repurchase a new one because of a failed uh, system, it was still $3,100. So you could basically have thirty thousand dollars for monitoring of your sits. You could have eight to twelve thousand dollars, my guesstimation, of a electronic monitoring system uh, when that fails, and you could have thirty-one hundred dollars for a uh, vessel monitoring system. So when you add all three of them together, it could be forty to fifty thousand dollars to go fishing. The camera technician to uh, work on these cameras. It's going to cost us $75 an hour if we have problems. I had the guy working on my boat for nine separate days in the past month. We're going to have to pay for their room and board when they travel to work on our vessels. We're going to have to pay for their plane tickets, for their accommodations, and their rental cars. That's what we're facing. You know, with today's economy and the price of fuel, the price of bait, the price of gear, keeping your vessel up. We can't go fishing for cheap fish. So if you want cheap fish, go to McDonald's and get a fish sandwich. The plastic long line industry in 2023 cannot work for cheap fish. National Marine Fisheries has said that the long line industry can, might not be able to withstand the, um, the cost and the issues with the cameras. How does that make you feel that they're basically saying that they've done the math and they don't think you can take what they're gonna put on paper? And they're still gonna, and they still want us to do it. That means that they did like, hey, this is a great way for us to get you out of business. This is, this is another leverage tool we can use against you to finally put you out of business. That's how I feel. I feel like, hey, they finally got the ammunition that they need to finish us off. And it essentially is gonna be what most of us assume as our obituary. Our industry since 2000, the year 2000, has been rationalized from 430 boats down to approximately 82. If you want to do away with the food production that the Plagic Long Line industry produces in this country, continue on and we'll go away. NOAA and National Marine Fishery Service should be doing everything in their power for us to succeed, to continue on, to be food producers for this nation, simply. But the politics and the inequities and the unaccountability of all sectors that use this resource is only placed upon the plastic longline industry. You're saying that if they had new baseline data, current baseline data, they would eliminate the whole, whole need for these cameras and it would clean everything up. But if they had new current data, they would just phase the camera out, I believe, if they did the right thing. There's just no need for them anymore. It seems current baseline data on the bluefin tuna would remedy this issue. Instead of having the fishermen fund Noah's surveillance, the longline pelagic fishermen that I interviewed said that they're the most marked for dead industry within seafood. Are they being targeted or are they being eliminated? To quote the classic dystopian film and novel, 1984, Big Brother is watching you. Are they watching your food? Guess what? We sit on the bucket right under the camera, right where the camera shows us. So every time we go out and use the bucket, use the bathroom, they have us dropping our drawers. Who is on the other end viewing these? I don't care if it's a male or a female, I don't really care. Somebody is looking at my that I don't approve of.